Hey guys, today we are going to talk about a interesting scenario where Jeremy is not going to be allowed to go to GP Indy, but I'm almost certain that he will go to GP Indy and he'll try to get into the uh, facilities, the public facilities, only to be kicked out and then he'll probably record it and it should be a very interesting video. That's what I would do if I were Jeremy in his current situation. I would go there get kicked out, record getting kicked out, and then make a video about it. So it's pretty ridiculous that Channel Fireball is banning certain people based, I mean, there's no other way for me to say it. Uh, there's plenty of people who are banned from magic, like Alex Bocchini, or who are allowed to go to these places even if they can't play in the main event or even side events. But they can sell cards, they can interact with people. Uh, just because you're banned does not mean you should not be able to go to this event. Now, I don't know how strict that policy has been in the past, but I will say that I would be shocked to learn that Alex Bocchini was not at these events, given that his girlfriend was is a seller or a player or is actively at all of these events. Um, and we know that Alex Bocchini was in GP Las Vegas. I don't know if he was unbanned at the time, but that seems... It would make sense for him to go to different events with his girlfriend who's already at the event um, so i don't think anyone kicked him out even though he was banned at the time so china fireball made an announcement that they don't allow people who have lifetime bans to well, that seems very specific uh, it seems very targeted to jeremy because how many other people have a lifetime ban that would go to a gp event not many but because they're not targeting just people with one year band, I apparently Alex or even Travis right now could go to an event. Uh, not that he would want to, but he could theoretically go to the physical event. Now that's where I kind of draw my line and I'm not, uh, I will say that Channel Fireball is being very biased here and it makes sense. They are Wizard of Coasts. They have all the GPs. They have a monopoly. They can charge you whatever they want and they have been doing so. And the customer is paying whatever they want. So maybe the market. But I will say this, uh, eventually it'll come and bite you. Uh, it, every action that you make now may not have consequences now, but later, we'll see. I'm not going to be going to GP Houston, although I have probably $8,000 of cards I would want to sell I'm probably going to sell them mostly on my website now. <laughs> it's just like a thousand file layers. Pretty much, if you want to know what they are, it's like 500 file layers, 200 noble hierarchs, and maybe like 100 malaria's. I'm trying to shift over. Oh, and a ton of fetch lands. Just, I want to move all my fetch lands. Um, all of them. And shock lands. And just like random lands like Creeping Tar Pit. I just accumulated way too much of them. Uh, there is a danger of reprints, and I'm not too happy. My website is kind of ready, kind of not ready. But, I mean, the store should be theoretically ready by the end of January, um, assuming people don't continue to get sick. Uh, so we've been a little bit uh, delayed uh, because our, our people, are, the team is sick, and there's nothing I can do about that. It's the holidays, and they're sick, and they were sick before the holidays, and now it's the holidays, and... Um, so the hours are not being uh, put in currently, and you really need a ton of hours to start a store. Now, many of you will ask, why do I have, you know, I do not like MTG headquarters. Um, I personally think that he is a little too extreme for my taste, but at the same time, he should be allowed to play magic with his fans. Like, you know, he shouldn't have to go to a, a bar or something. I don't know where he's going. He shouldn't have to privately text people 30 minutes before the event in fear of repercussions of you know people attacking him and his fans. And I think that is a true danger here. And that's crazy to me that this is just a game. And I'll just say this. If he actually does this, um, this will be a very good example of he, him loving the game. He's not being paid. No one's flying him out. He's not getting free product. He's not getting promoted. He's doing this 100% for the fans if that's what happens. Now, I hope Jeremy does it because that would show everyone that he's the real deal. And that would show everyone that like he still loves magic, even though he's critical of it. And that's po it's, it is possible to love magic and be critical of it. And that's the key that most YouTubers don't, they don't 
they have to represent Wizards of the Coast's brand because they get free trips, uh, they get free uh, cards to spoil, they get free product, unlimited free product from what I heard. And that is to me insane because if the card quality stock is very poor, what you need is you need to tell Wizard of the Coast as loud and as soon as possible there's a problem because you will save them down the road. Even if it's just one extra set that they realize and can solve the problem, you would save them embarrassment, you would save them bad PR, you would save them a ton. But if everyone's a yes man, everyone's saying, yes, amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, Tolarian and Wedge, they have, especially Wedge, he has not come out with a video saying that the card quality stock is poor. And I remember HQ calling out both of them. It's the same problem with the monthly magic box. Even if you later make a video, it's too late. Like, what is your video? So if you make seven monthly magic box videos like Tolarian did, and you realize in video number four that something is wrong, because you should have, it was super obvious in video number four, I, can, I have the proof to show you, then you should probably tell your subscribers in video number five, not wait until video number seven or eight to do it. And there's, you know, political reasons that you would not talk about the card quality stock until you got the A-OK -okay from Wizard of the Coast that the problem is fixed already. And yeah, it takes a little bit of time. And I think that's what happened. The Wizard of the Coast told Tolarian, you can go, go for it. And if the problem was already fixed, but then, you know, they still kept producing things that are very poor quality. But if you truly love the game, you would call them out immediately. Uh, just like Monthly Magic Box, you would tell your subscribers immediately after you got messages that people were not receiving their boxes from your YouTube video and from your Facebook, which they did. And instead of waiting and receiving, I don't know what you're waiting for, like just save them, right? Just say, hey, you need to make better card stock. This is unacceptable. And then they have to change, yes? It's annoying for Wizard of the Coast, but in the long run, it's going to help their game. Right now, this current generation of new players, they're used to really bad card stock. And that's what they associate with Magic the Gathering. They associate cards that peel. I mean, even Iconic Masters, they have cards that are not glued or laminated correctly. That is insane. It's a $10 pack, guys. And of course, on... On the shows, you know, the command zone, all this stuff when they're drafting, I never, all their booster packs are perfect. I wonder why that is, aka monthly magic box, when all the YouTubers got their mon monthly magic boxes on time or early, while all the subscribers, they were, you know, promoting the monthly magic box to did not even get their boxes. And they made that clear to the YouTubers who then continued to make videos on the monthly magic box. And that is my biggest criticism. This is exactly what happened here as well with the card quality. I mean, what else can I say? Like, if you love the game, then you need to call them out on bad stuff as soon as you can. That way they can fix it sooner instead of waiting and waiting. And what are you waiting for? Like, you know the card quality stock is poor. You open the cards. You can feel it. You can see it, videos of it. Your subscribers are telling you. And you just wait. Um, because there's a, a monetary advantage in waiting. Anyway, this is really off topic, but I should make another video about it. And that's my, um, biggest pet peeve. I mean, I have a few videos on monthly magic box and Pico trade, but there's more things that they sponsored that I don't agree with. And that really just, uh, I mean, it kind of offends me because it's assuming magic players are not smart enough to figure out what's going on. Right, like if they don't get their box from monthly magic box, they know they didn't get the box. Therefore, they're going to comment on the video where they purchased. You know, you were the advertisement for the box. You bear some responsibility. And yes, later on you make a video saying that it sucks, but at the same time, you could have made that video earlier. You could have made that video. Um, I guess it was pretty aggressive, but you could have done it earlier and saved people who. Same with Puka Trade, right? This is the same model that a lot of these YouTubers follow is they have information. Of course they have information. You see how much information Rudy has? Tolarian and Wedge definitely have as much information about uh, about you know these Puka Trade. They're smart individuals. They can figure it out. Puka Trade was always... If the CEO of Puka Trade is taking $5 million out, how is this not a, in one year? How is this not a scam? 
Like, can anyone explain to me how that would work where the CEO is taking $5 million of cash out, everyone's being given free points, and now $24,000 of dues are being taken out a month? How, how would this work? How would this system work where, where would there be injection of money? Would it be like an uh, investor of some type would donate like a billion dollars and then fund the whole? No, because you know what's going to happen after they donate a billion dollars? The CEO, Eric, is going to take out $500 billion from the company because that's how he works. That's how he thinks. That's how all of them think. Like, duh. Anyway, bye.